следующий спикер у нас не из корпорации, собственно говоря, но Джорджо э, Флорес, он э, работает в 500 стартапс, и, наверное, на текущий момент с точки зрения таких крупных сетевых акселераторов, это один из самых больших акселераторов во всем мире. Соответственно, наверное, Джорджо может рассказать об опыте в разных странах и об опыте работы как с корпорациями, так и с правительствами. Мой вопрос, Джорджо, вот если, исходя из вашего опыта, с учетом того, что есть десятки стран, в которых работает э, Plug and Play, э, в рамках Plug and Play э, какие э, основные преимущества или какие основные э, проблемы вы видите в работе с крупными корпорациями? Почему корпорации в каких-то странах лучше работают со стартапами, а в каких-то странах хуже? Thank you for that question. Thank you, Kirill, and uh, good uh, afternoon to the audience and to uh, my co-panelists. Uh, so Plug and Play currently works with uh, over 500 conglomerates in the world where we help these companies augment their innovation strategies. Uh, and the process by which we're able to uh, accelerate this process is by introducing them to the best startups uh, worldwide that best fit the technology focus uh, the conglomerates are looking for. Uh, we have presence now in about 35 cities in close to 20 countries globally, and we see at least 20,000 startups worldwide. Last year, we accelerated over 2,000 startups in about 18 industry verticals. So basically, we do not, we do the, a lot of the heavy lifting of vetting the startups for the corporate partners that we have. One example I can share with you is uh, our engagement in uh, with Daimler in uh, Stuttgart, which started five years ago under our startup autobahn acceleration program. <clears throat> I think this, is, this partnership is the most successful mobility vertical acceleration program in the world. As of uh, end last year, we have grown this platform to more than cor 30 corporate partners and have accelerated about 30 uh, or accelerated over 300 startups resulting to over close to 400 pilot projects. In fact, we even realized uh, one of our investments called SoundHound become a unicorn here when Daimler, Tencent, and uh, Hyundai, among others, put in $100 million three years ago in the startup at a $1 billion valuation. So <clears throat> now, the benefits of working for, for, for corporations with startups, uh, let, me, let me try to answer that by describing some uh, general characteristics of startups and founders. Typ typically and by nature, uh, by nature, these guys are disruptors. No? Uh, they uh, seldom accept status quo and have uh, very, very restless minds. Another feature which I think is important is that they need to succeed because they don't have a stable salary to save them if they fail. So uh, these characteristics that uh, give you now urgency and uh, necessity uh, on their side. These qualities uh, bring about creativity, speed, uh, agility, uh, which I believe are essential elements in the innovation process. Very often, startups are all also the first thinkers and therefore first in what they do in the market. I remember a couple of years ago, having lunch with the head of innovation of Hilton Group. The reason he said they joined our platform was because they were caught by surprise by Airbnb. They, need, uh, they needed to be in the front row seat of the new innovations going on in the hospitality space. So uh, when they see the next Airbnb, instead of having to compete with them, they, they could collaborate right from the start. Another example is uh, MUFG, the largest enterprise bank in Japan. They were looking for innovative business solutions which they could offer to their clients, especially the SME segment. And instead of building these products, they felt that it was more efficient and faster for them to source these solutions through, uh, through startups. 
And then, uh, Kim, you ask about government. Uh, yes, we, we are also very active in, in, in this space. The common goal for government uh, agencies is to help their economies by pushing their homegrown startups to be successful, not only in their own countries, but globally. About five years ago, President Widodo of Indonesia visited us at Plug and Play in Silicon Valley. I think he was very impressed at what he saw, and this is the reason why we now have operations in Jakarta to help build further its startup ecosystem, as well as supporting the corporations on innovation and startup investments. We now have made about 30 investments in Jakarta so far and running acceleration programs in the financial services sector and food and agriculture tech. In Singapore, on the other hand, the government realizes that their local markets is much too small for their startups to flourish. So we've been working with this local agency called Enterprise Singapore to bring their startups to other Southeast Asian countries like the Philippines. Another example is uh, with the Asian Development Bank out of, the, out of Manila. Uh, it's not exactly a country, but it feels like government. ADB has uh, recently formed an early stage social impact fund to invest in startups in the region addressing sustainability and climate change. So we're helping them out in terms of technology trends, deal flow, as well as co-invest in them. I should also mention China because it is very committed to promoting technology innovation, technology and innovation and, and startups in the country. And it's quite unique in its approach in the sense that it incentivizes conglomerates to engage uh, with startups. Джорджо, спасибо большое. Вы затронули тему э, sustainability, устойчивого развития и то, как Plug and Play работает в этой теме. А, на самом деле очень непростой вопрос, поскольку тема сейчас на хайпе, все с интересом к этому относятся. Но основные заказчики в теме для Plug and Play, вот по вашему опыту, это заказчики со стороны правительств или заказчики со стороны корпораций? Как это происходит в мире? Thank you. I'm glad you asked that question, uh, since this subject matter is very close to my heart. Uh, in two th in uh, October of 2019, Plug and Play officially launched its sustainability platform with its partnership with the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. For those of you who have not heard of the Alliance, it is a non-profit consortium of about 60 plus corporations from all around the world and from different parts of the value chain. They have all contributed 10 to $50 million into a collection fund over five years with a goal of deploying capital into projects and startups with a mission of ending plastic waste around the world. Plug and Play's role with the Alliance is run its global accelerator program. We, acti we actively source and vet new and innovative startups around the world that are focused on tackling plastic waste with their solutions in waste collection, sorting, processing, market exchange, and end-use markets. We now run these acceleration programs in Silicon Valley, Paris, Shanghai, Singapore, Sao Paulo, and Johannesburg. Since the launch of our program, we have accelerated 32 startups, which has led to 75-plus commercial pilots and POCs. We also helped our batch startups raise over $35 million in funding from the Alliance and its corporate companies, Plug and Play and the Plug and Play Network. In addition to our work in plastics, Plug and Play is also launching programs in carbon neutrality and water resilience in all of our regional hubs, including Shanghai and Singapore here in Asia. Plug and Play is committed and will continue to be committed to sustainability, so I encourage everyone in the audience to join us in this advocacy. Thank you very much. Спасибо большое, Джорджо. Очень интересный ответ. И я все-таки, наверное, обращу внимание всей аудитории, да, что а, несмотря на то, что тема на хайпе, тема важна, и э, Plug and Play, и другие институты развития привлекают внимание корпораций, так или иначе общество вкладывается в то, чтобы эти новые технологии появились. И это во многом такая еще и социальная общественная работа.